Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today I want to do a follow-up video on this Sicane multimedia player that Sicane sent me to install in my car and review and use. So I've had the unit in here about two, maybe two and a half months, and I really don't like it. So there's really not anything wrong with the unit per se. There's a few little quirks and things that don't work quite right, and I'll go through and explain some of those, but mostly the reason I want to remove this is because I just simply don't like having this touch screen in here and don't really need all this functionality in this car. So let me talk a little bit about some of the things I do like about the unit first. Now one thing that I think is really great is that it fits in the car almost perfectly. In fact, I think it fits better than the original factory radio. And you can see even the color on the plastics is a dead match. So they did a nice job engineering this thing to fit this uh, 2012 Toyota Corolla. Now another thing I like about the unit is you can see there's uh, some hard controls on it that will get you to sort of the main usable functions. There's a home key and a back key, and I like having that tactile feedback. One of the things that I don't like about the unit, and, and this is my personal preference, is that I don't like touch screens. I don't like touch screens on smartphones. I don't like touch screens on anything because I just have kind of poor dexterity when it comes to that and I end up pushing the wrong buttons. So when I'm driving along and I want to change radio stations, I inevitably hit kind of the wrong buttons, but we'll talk more about that later. Now I like the fact that there's some auxiliary jacks on the front. You can plug in a USB cable, you can plug in some auxiliary audio devices, there's a built-in mic, you can plug in an external GPS, SD card reader, so on and so forth. You can even use a remote control with this unit. Now of course this unit will also play CDs and DVDs, so that's another nice feature if that's something that you happen to do a lot of. Another thing that I like about this unit is that it has a built-in uh, provision for a GPS antenna, which is up there on the dash. I guess you guys can't see it right now. But you could open up navigation and use this thing to navigate your way around. And in fact, I've done that a few times just to try it out. Now, this thing doesn't have a data connection, although there are provisions for you to put a 3G card on it, so you could have it connected to your cell network directly, or you could map your phone to it and do it that way, but you can download maps and use them offline and kind of work things that way. And like I said, I tried that and it worked okay. But because this is a car that I drive almost exclusively back and forth to work, uh, maybe an occasional trip to the store in town or to bring my son to practice or something like that, I'm really never going anywhere in this car where I need a navigation feature. So even though that's a positive for me, it's not really something that I'm going to use in this vehicle. Now another feature that I like about this is it's basically an Android tablet, so you can download and install any apps that you want to put on here, um, as long as you have a wireless connection when you're downloading the app, of course. And that's kind of a nice feature. You could put even games in here, so like if you're you know, sitting in a parking lot waiting for somebody, you could amuse yourself on this, but I have all that functionality on my phone. And I find that trying to manage all the apps on both devices and keep them synchronized is just more time and effort than I really want to put into a car radio. Okay, so another feature about the radio that I like is the fact that you can open up this app and you can connect your phone through Bluetooth and, uh, you know, pipe your car's uh, or your phone's audio through the car, um, making phone calls or playing Pandora or anything like that. But having said that, my factory radio had that same feature, and I think it even worked a little bit better on the stock radio. But there's nothing wrong with this one. It does work. Now, having said that, you can download and run Pandora on this device, but again, you'll need a constant data connection, either a Wi-Fi or a cell card, or you'll need to pipe your phone's data connection through the radio. And again, that's one more thing that you just have to manage and deal with. And for me, I just don't have the time. Now, some people may not find this to be a problem, but just managing all those connections and getting them established is kind of a pain in the neck for me. When I want to go somewhere, I just want to hop in the car and go. And I find it easier to just use Pandora or Spotify or whatever on my phone and just pipe the audio through the Bluetooth connection. So I really don't need another installation of Pandora in the radio. It's just one more thing to manage. So having said that, there are a few problems with the unit that came up, at least for me. Now the first problem was that 
the installation kit for this was not uh, complete. So the first thing that was missing was the correct adapter to adapt my vehicle's antenna connection to the back of the radio. I had to go out and buy that myself. It was maybe seven or eight dollars on Amazon, so no big deal considering I got this for nothing. But if you're paying for one of these units, you'll want a complete kit. And I'm not sure they have all the kits worked out quite right. When I did email them about it, they seemed confused as to what my problem was and what I was asking about. So I found it easier to just fix the problem myself. So along those same lines, the adapters that were supplied with the unit that will adapt my steering wheel controls to the unit and also connect the unit to the car so it knows when the headlights are on and when it's dark or light out was not the right adapter. And again, I contacted Sakane about that and rather than send me the correct adapter, they seemed confused by the question and then ultimately sent me sort of a schematic diagram and told me that I needed to connect my wires directly to my car. So I'm not going to cut the wiring harness in my car and I really didn't feel like trying to come up with my own adapter or wiring, although I really could have. Um, that was just more effort than I really wanted to put into this thing. Um, so my steering wheel controls and the automatic dimming feature don't work. So you may not think that the auto dimming would be an issue, but for me it kind of was. For many months out of the year, when I get up to go to work, it's dark out. I, I hit the road pretty early. And with this thing at full brightness, it's really kind of bright and distracting. So I have to manually come down here and turn the brightness up or down. And again, you may not think that that's such a big deal, but you know, if you're running late for work and you want to hit the road type of thing, it's just one more thing to kind of slow you down and it just gets to be a bit of a nuisance. So aside from that, I can live without the steering wheel controls. In fact, I don't use them on the stock radio. So another thing that I noticed with this unit, it's probably a nitpick, but the audio quality on this one just doesn't seem quite as good as what the factory radio offered. Now I'm no audiophile and that doesn't really matter that much to me, especially because a lot of the time that I'm in this car, I'm listening to talk radio or news. And when you're listening to something like that, the audio quality really isn't an issue. But when I did want to listen to music with this thing, there just was something a little bit missing. Now I know there's an equalizer in here that you can fool with, and I played around with that a bit to try and make things sound better, but it just never quite got to where I wanted it to be. So even though this is a perfectly functional unit and it fits the car beautifully and looks nice in here, it's just not for me. So I think I'm going to remove it from the car and go back to the factory radio. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the Sakane Multimedia Player. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.